everybody. My name is Joel Clark. I'm going to call to order the town select board for tonight's meeting. It is Monday, February 24th of 2020, and it is 7 p.m., and we're here for our special informational meeting. And likewise, I'd like to call the village trustees meeting to order again for the 24th of February at 7 p.m. 2020. The meetings will run um, in parallel. Next item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item is the agenda review. Start right down at the end of the table over that way. Take some of the end of change on the agenda. Oh, sir. Pete, none. Pete, thank you. I'm good, thank you. The only change I have is keep it uh, where the town warning and then the presentation from the town actually follow each other right after the town warning is read by the moderator. I will go ahead and uh, present. And discuss the town budget, and then the village will do their warning and do the discussion of their budget. Any other changes? No, nope. gentlemen, any, any suggestions? No, nope. we're fine, thank you. All right, all right. you're all set, then, Brian. Well, uh, good evening, um, and welcome to the information meeting for the year 2020. The town Swanton and the town moderator, Brian Savage. And this is about the only official duty that I get to do as the town moderator. Um, so, we will start by the reading of the warning. Uh, the legal voters of the town of Swanton and the town of Swanton School District, who are legal voters in town meeting, are hereby notified and warned to meet the Swanton Village Municipal Complex, first and Elm Street, on Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, at 7 a.m. We vote the articles herein set forth. All articles are to be voted on by Australian ballot system. The polls will open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. Article 1, to elect from the legal voters of said town the following officer. Moderator for the town for a term of one year. One town clerk for a three-year term. One town treasurer for a three-year term. One selectman for a three-year term. One selectman for a two-year term. One selectman for a one-year unexpired term one lister for a three-year term, one auditor for a three-year term, one trustee of public money for a three-year term, one library trustee for a five-year term, one library trustee for a four-year unexpired term, one cemetery commissioner for a five-year term, one cemetery commissioner for a four unexpired year term, town grand juror, town agent, and a collector of delinquent taxes. Article two. Shall the town appropriate $801,962.82 for the operation and maintenance of the town highway department? Article 3. Shall the town appropriate $255,971 for fire protection? Article 4. Shall the town appropriate $124,965.64 to provide police protection to the residents of the town of Swanton? Article 5. Shall the town appropriate $530,143.15 to the town general expense. Article 6. Shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the fiscal year commencing January 1, 2020, and annually thereafter, by its actual receipt of payment, postmarks will not be accepted at the town offices by 5 p.m. on October 15, or if the 15th shall fall on a weekend or holiday, the following business day by 5 p.m. with an 8% penalty and 1% interest per month or portion thereof due thereon for the first three months and 1.5% per month or portion thereof thereafter to be charged for the late payment of any installment. Article 7. Shall the town appropriate $200,405 to provide rescue services to the residents of the town of Swanton? Article 8. Shall the town appropriate $120,698.28 to 
to the operating and maintenance budget of the Recreation Department. In Article 9, shall the town appropriate $166,676 to the operating and maintenance budget of the Swanton Public Library. The legal voters of the town of Swanton are further notified that an informational meeting will be held at the Swanton Village Municipal Complex on Monday, February the 24th, 2020, at 7 p.m. for the purposes of explaining all budget items to the voters. Dated at Swanton, Vermont, this 21st day of January 2020, Signed Joel Clark, Chair, Karen Drennan, Vice Chair, Gary Senovar, James Gilmack, and Mark Rushwell. And dated and filed the 21st of January 2020, attested to by Kathy L. Fournier, Town Clerk. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions <coughs> so far? All right. I'm going to run through a little bit of information about what we've done over the last year and uh, what we'd like uh, to see for our budget for next year. All right, let's see. That is not working. Reg. Reggie. Reggie. Just the arrow, right? Yep. What do I, which do you want me to point it at? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I think I did already. Power switch on the side. It's pointing at the wrong line of coffee, looks like that. All right, David, you can and just look at if you want. Do you, do you get it in the right computer, Rich? Yep. Hey Joel, you want to announce? All right, now we're waiting to get the slides going. <clears throat> Go ahead and make the announcement on the uh, winners of the chili cook-off. First of all, thanks to the folks. Or the plan. You got the list right there? All right, so when do you want to do that? Right now. All right, well, we're waiting. <laughs> uh, yes, the chili cook-off. Uh, first prize goes to James Bray. Holy <laughs> Chair, uh, select board, four years as chair, several years working as our police commissioner. He will stay on as a town health officer until his term expires in uh, 2021. I also wanted to highlight uh, who we dedicated the uh, report to. This year it was to the folks who founded the Swamp Enhancement Project. There's details of that in the report itself. So many thanks to the folks who got that started. And after uh, several years, we are still going strong. Okay, our five members select board continue to work well, so we say we certainly have disagreements on some stuff, but uh, we work hard to uh, sort out the differences and, and get things done for the town. We did have two new members, Karen Drennan and Mark Russell, elected to the board, so glad to have them on the board and uh, one of them running again uh, this term. After Dan uh, resigned and moved to Franklin, James Gilmatt, who had uh, previous experience, came back to the board uh, to fill through uh, March, and then uh, he is running. Worked with the village on the uh, flags for veterans. I think both reports uh, very nicely displayed that on the front of their reports. Here's another shot of it. Uh, can't say that Swanton doesn't support its veterans. Nice job, everybody. We did uh, have the renaming of the uh, Railroad Museum, Ronald F. Kilburn Transportation Museum. That was done through the Historical Society and the select board working together. Uh, well deserved. Electronic sign, getting a lot of usage. I think we're in the, about the third or fourth year for that. 
Another popular uh, great job uh, the folks from the Arts Council, Art Spectacular and having some fireworks and then uh, we have gone now seven years uh, contracting with the village for the police support that we get. Nice picture of the new science museum. Talk about it later too, the roof now on the museum is completely redone. A few of the highlights, uh, another year of payment on our garage debt, we have till 2033, uh, but the building itself is doing very well. Our co-foreman, Kevin LePan, Mike Bacchus, doing very well in the highway department. Talked about the museum roof, we did some landscaping up at the town garage and uh, have the flag up there, thanks to Gordon and Debbie Winters for the landscape. We, we will be putting a report on the website. Did we get that in digits today so we can do that? <clears throat> okay. It'll be another day or two, but we will get it on the website. Big one here for 2019. We received uh, $6,332,000 uh, $6 in the state grant to construct a sidewalk from McDonald's up to the high school. Um, It'll take about four years to get that project completely done. This year we will actually start design on the project and then uh, go to construction probably next year. We also received $143,456 for grants to resurface and improve South River Street. And that's up to uh, BB Road and then with any luck we will get a grant to do BB Road and get them both done this year. But right now we'll at least get South River Street done. Received uh, 44000 to study pedestrian travel on Lake Street and McCall Shore Road. That's a uh, big concern that came to us several times, and uh, we're at least getting the project started to look at that. We hired the landscape uh, architect consultants to uh, work on the master plan for Marble Mill, and I know Betsy's here, and she's uh, heading that project up. Resealed striped town off this parking lot. This thing doesn't like where it point. There we go. Here's what we paid. Don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but each year we spend at least three hundred thousand uh, dollars resurfacing our roads and making them better. And next year with the grants, we could be almost up to a half a million. A couple culverts replaced on South River Street. We did also widen the road, so when we pave it this year, it will be wider and a little better for pedestrians. Still not as safe as I'd like to see it, but better. We did finish the last section of sidewalk on Robin Hood Drive, so now you can get the whole um, Ronan Drive up the Bushy Street on sidewalk, a good improvement there. Placed a couple, we replaced a couple of culverts on BB Road, and that was done through some grants, so we actually received $4,329 back from the state for doing that work. We did our stormwater permit for Bushy Street for the next 10 years. And then uh, Berry Road, you'll see the picture here in just a minute, culvert up on Berry Road, washed out. And within just a few days, our town crew did a great job of getting that road back in, uh, into operation. We still have some work to do on it. We're going to meet with FEMA this spring and figure out how much uh, they're willing to give us to fix it. But that's what it looked like right after the uh, Halloween storm. That culvert itself is about seven feet tall, 10 feet wide. It's an oval shape to give you an idea of how much material uh, washed out of there. <coughs> Bushy Road up on French Hill. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's interesting because we don't have any residents who live on that road. It's a very short section of road that connects Swanton to Fairfield. But anyway, we uh, fixed it up and, and got it operational. That's Kevin on the uh, culvert. Future projects uh, mentioned we're going to do South Main Street this year. We haven't selected the other town roads for resurfacing. If someone has a suggestion of what you'd like to see done, please get it to Kevin, Mike, or myself, or another select board member, and we'll consider it. We will fund fireworks this year. I haven't heard too many complaints about it, so our intent is to continue to uh, support that as part of the Arc Spectacular or some other event. South River, or did I miss that? Uh, oh, South Main, yeah, South River. Sorry, Village. Um, and then uh, we're going to continue to work with the Village on economic development efforts. That's a, that's a team thing that we do. And if, as we can, we're going to go after more grants, sidewalks, roads, etc. 
how to get into the money. <coughs> Excuse me. If all voted articles are approved, the town general budget would be $1,267,261.20. To be raised by taxes if all articles are approved is one million seventeen thousand nine hundred twenty two forty three the highway budget Which the highway budget includes the police and the fire department total of one million three hundred ninety eight thousand ninety nine dollars and seventy five cents to be raised by taxes one million two hundred sixty thousand three hundred nine dollars and forty six cents for total town budget of two million six hundred sixty-five thousand three hundred sixty dollars and ninety-five cents, we raised by taxes two million two hundred seventy-eight thousand three hundred twenty-one eighty-nine. So take a look here. I already read the amounts. Uh, all the articles are approved. Tax rate for uh, twenty twenty would be point one five zero four for the general budget. The twenty nineteen tax rate was point. 14441 increase of 0 0.0063 uh, and that's per hundred. Any questions on that? I'll show you in a minute how it uh, fares out for a $200,000 home. Same thing with highway, I already read you the, the numbers. The uh, Projected tax rate 0 0.2441, 2019 tax rate 0.2362, so the tax increase 0 0.0079. Here's where we put all the tax rates together. This is for residential uh, property. When you add the general, the highway, and the education rate, for 2020, the total town tax rate is 1.8195. And last year for 2019 is 1.7718. So the projected increase 0 0.04557. If you're non resident, the increase is uh, almost double. And that's because of the education tax rate. The other numbers are the same. The education tax rate 1.6415, and it was 1.5504. So the total increase uh, is 0 0.1053, and now I'll show you on a $200,000 property. The tax bill in 2019 would have been 3,543.60, and your 2020 tax bill would be 3,639 for increase of $95.40. Now, Kathy, where's Kathy? Correct me if I'm wrong, the state right now, as far as the education, that's the best guess of where it's going to be, right? Yes. Brian, do you have more on that? Language? No, I don't. No. Okay. We won't yeah. actually get the actual rates until July. The actual it's general July. highway numbers should be Our good. Our numbers should be good. But as far as the education rate, that is the best numbers we've been given to date on uh, where they're going to be. Any questions on this? And then if you're a non-resident, again, I said it, your rate went up almost double, so you can see that your tax bill would be, uh, it would increase $210.60. Total 2020 tax would be 4072 All right, I'm going to go down to the list. This is too easy. So before we leave the budget numbers, any questions at all regarding the budgets? Making my job too easy. Okay. I'm going to go down to the list of candidates for office. If you're here tonight and you want to get up and, and speak for a minute or two, uh, please do. Uh, first, for the selectmen, as I already announced, we have one year unexpired. James Gilman is not here, but he did send us a, a quick note to read. So, yep. if you would, Mark, please read. Sure. Right. This is on uh, behalf of James Wall, and I don't know who I am. My name is James Gilman. I've been a sworn taxpayer all my life. I'm currently running for a third term position on the select board. After being on the select board for the past five years until March, I stepped down from my seat in November when a vacancy was available. I was asked by many to return to the board. I was reappointed to the select board in November. Now I'm running for the remaining one year term on the seat that I'm currently filling in. Uh, I, as a sworn select board member, I will try my best to keep the taxes as affordable as possible. 
as I was on the board for five years, I had experience in how the select board operates and aware of budgets and have lots of knowledge of the town of Swanton. I greatly appreciate your vote on town meeting day. Whether you vote for myself or my opponent, please come out and vote as it's very important. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Heather, you're here tonight. Hi, I'm Heather Kowski, and I'm usually over there reporting the select board and the village trustees that have been doing that for several years, so I'm very well informed about what's going on for both boards, and I'm also very involved in other organizations like the Swanton uh, Arts Council and uh, Economic Development in terms of Elizabeth and stuff like that. So I'm very involved in what's going on and I'd like to put that knowledge to use. I'm kind of here for you, I think, because um, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom that has a lot of jobs, but we live primarily on my income, so we're used to having to only spend when we have it, so I think that's an asset as well. And anyway, um, I hope you guys all come out and go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. <laughs> Select one, two years, Gary. Any words you'd like to say tonight? <clears throat> Not really. <laughs> I've been on the board now for a two year term, and before that, I served as a temporary or fill in or something. Uh, so it's a very, uh, very interesting job. And, and, uh, yeah. This really is job. It's, it's there to do. And you can all, find out a lot of things about the town that you never know from sitting out in the audience or not even, not even wanting to. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting and I'm sure you should vote for the back of All right. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I'm Mark Hoffman. I'm here polls, but it's been a learning experience for me. I'm uh, learning every day from Joel and the board and from the citizens. I do appreciate the, the opportunity again to serve you again. Um, again, I just continue to learn and understand it and fill this role. And anytime you ever have any questions, concerns, I'm always open. But again, thank you. Mark. Kathy. Well, good evening, everybody. Because I'm Kathy Farnier, if you don't know me, if you do know me. Must have voted for me before. <laughs> I am running again, and even though I'm not running opposed, I always like to know the, vo the voters are still happy with me in my office, so a voter turnout means a lot to me, and the numbers mean a lot to me too, and this community means a lot to me. I love what I do, I love going to work every day, I enjoy everybody I work with, and I thank you for your support. Okay. You get a chance to speak again if you'd like. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, town agent is vacant. Town grand juror is vacant. I guess for the grand juror, it's probably a good thing that uh, we don't have a big need for that position. Uh, moderator, Brian. Oh. Uh, I said earlier, but thank you for your support. Thank you. All right. Listener for three years, eight, I don't know anything here. Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Library trustee, I don't think I saw Kathy come in tonight. Okay, Library Trustee Richard. I did see Richard earlier. There he is. Any words of wisdom? Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can find me. I'll hang around here later on. I'm done. All right, thanks, Richard. <laughs> Trustee What's of good? Public Money, Cody Hemenway. All right. Uh, I'm Cody. I was born and raised in Swan. Just kind of getting into things. Kind of, I don't want to fight off too much, you know, more than what I can chew. So, small but important little things. That's about it. All right, well, thanks for Thank stepping you. up and uh, one day come for the select board position. <laughs> <laughs> what would really be nice to see on some of these, it's great that there's only one person and there's a reason for that, but on some of the others, it'd be nice to see two or three people run and seeing that, that much involved or willing to get involved. All right, Amy, auditor. Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> the cemetery commissioner, Gary. Anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I've been associated with cemetery for about 30 years. <laughs> Fortunately, that isn't my residence over there. But, uh, <laughs> we have a very good uh, relationship with our man that does maintenance over there. We haven't had a complaint in several years. So it's good time, John McDonald. 
everything is uh, running fine. If anybody ever has a question or something, they'll fly off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Cody, you get a chance to talk about that too if you want. I'm not there yet, but. <laughs> All right. Betty, what's your delinquent taxes? Yes. I'm Betty Cheney, and I'm running for re election as the delinquent tax collector for both the town and the village. I very much appreciate my past support, and we ask for everyone's continued support. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there's the town's official website. Go on there and get a look, get uh, information that you may need, different uh, policies that we have, etc. Information, phone numbers to call. <coughs> Did want to mention this tonight. Tomorrow night is the uh, school district budget meeting, seven o'clock. Uh, to be held at former MBU campus. Is that because it's the MBSD now? Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. So tomorrow night, encourage people to attend and uh, have your say about the school budget, which is the biggest part of our tax bill. Oh. <laughs> and uh, even though uh, the holidays are gone, uh, even wanted to share this photo right here. It does show the spirit uh, that comes out of that office. <laughs> And thank you very much. Again, uh, while we're up here, are there any questions for the select board that we can help try to answer? Go on once. Go on twice. Reggie, go on this. Okay. You want to read ours first? Or? Yep. Good evening. I'm Chris Leach, one of your select board members, and I get the good fortune of speaking for Neil Spear this evening. He and his wife are taking a much deserved vacation to visit their daughter and see a little bit of the south of the United States. And he would very much like to be here. In fact, I have a, um, a re election bid from him to read later. But right now, I'd like to move along by going giving you the village warning. The legal voters of the village of Swanton are hereby warned and notified to meet in the Swanton Village Complex at 121st Street, Swanton, Vermont, on Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, at 7 a.m. to vote for articles set forth. All articles are to be voted by Australian ballot. The polls open at 7 a.m. and will close at 7 p.m. Article 1, to elect from the legal voters of said village the following officers. President for one term, that would be Neil. Trustee for a three-year term, that would be Adam, who's coming this year. Clerk for one-year term, it's Diane, she does a wonderful job. And the collector of delinquent taxes, as she just mentioned. Article 2. Shall the voters of the village of Swan appropriate $131,726 for the operation and maintenance of the general fund for 2020? Shall the voters of the village of Swan appropriate, this is Article 2, Article 3. Shall the voters of the village of Swan appropriate $517? $1,597 for the operation and maintenance of the highway department for 2020. Article 4. Shall the voters for the village of Swans appropriate $80,833 for the operation and maintenance of the fire department for 2020. Article 5. Shall the voters of the village of Swan appropriate $686,886 for the operation and maintenance of the police department for 2020? Article 6. Shall the voters of the village of Swan authorize the Board of Trustees to place surplus funds in the highway department anticipated to be $30,615? into a capital fund for future equipment and purchases 
and paving projects. Article 7. Shall the voters of the village of Swan authorize the Board of Trustees to place surplus funds in the general fund anticipated to be $20,600 into a capital fund for future municipal complex upgrades? Article 8. Shall the voters of the village of Swan authorize the Board of Trustees to place surplus funds in the fire department anticipated to be $18,400 into a capital fund for future purchases? Article 9. Shall the voters of the village of Swan authorize a 0% five-year loan from the CBBG funds not to exceed $25,000 for the water department to replace water lines. That's the nine articles. The legal voters of the village are further notified that an information, informational meeting will be held at the Swan Village Complex on Monday, February 24, 2020 at 7 p.m. for the purpose of explaining all the budget items to the voters, dated in Swan, Vermont, 27th day of January, 2020. Signed by Neil Spear, President, Chris Leach, Trustee, Eugene LeBombard, Trustee, Adam Paxman, Trustee. Received and filed on the 27th day of January, 2020, as noted by Diane L. Day, Village Clerk. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming in. The last time I gave a, one of these presentations, it was teaching hazmat. It was 185 slides, so I'm not going to go through that. <laughs> but I uh, uh, want to go through the numbers uh, again for, uh, for this year. So the general fund for 2019, it was 0.0814. Uh, for 2020, it's projected at 0.0822. The fire department, 2019, was 0.0468 and projected to go to 0 0.0504. Uh, the police department, 0 0.3926 for 2019, and projected to go up to 0.3228 for 2020. Uh, so overall, the projected change is 0 0.047 for those departments. So for the village, for uh, $120,000 home, I mean, you're gonna see uh, your 2019 was sixteen thousand eight eighty-six dollars twenty cents. Proposed is going to be seventeen hundred and sixty-seven dollars sixty cents for eighty-one dollar forty cent change. Uh, basically, what this does it lays out what uh, each fund, what it's costing you each fund to come up to that seven seventeen hundred sixty-seven dollars and sixty cents. So any questions on those numbers at all? So understand one thing too, that the village also pays into the general of the town that covers <coughs> school tax, uh, library, uh, rec department, that kind of stuff too. Okay, so this doesn't figure in any of those taxes for the schools for the village residents. Okay, good so far? Nice. Okay, so 2019 in review, uh, wastewater plant. Now this, you can find this in the village's report. If you wanted to look along, I have, uh, I just abbreviated a lot of it, but uh, page four starts the water, uh, wastewater and water plant. So the TMDL standards for the new standards that the state is putting forth on us, uh, it's going to be a difficult challenge for us. We did see that we could meet the targets reduction in phosphorus uh, by uh, putting in an exorbitant amount of flocculant. So basically it takes the solids out of our effluent, uh, but what it did is increased our sludge, so our land app stuff. 
So uh, right now we're going into a 20 year evaluation for the wastewater plant. Uh, we're working with Aldrich and Elliott, the engineers, to try to figure out what's, our, what's going to be the best practice in order for us to achieve these targets that the state are putting on us. Uh, and routine maintenance, I mean, today the snow took down the, uh, the chimney for our furnace. But the guys actually put up a, did a really quick repair. But questions on that? Water treatment plant, still performing well. Uh, we do the pre uh, preventative maintenance, we'll talk about that in the maintenance department. We continue to monitor blue-green algae uh, in the Missisquoi Bay area. Uh, we have become, we'll begun the process with an engineer for a new water line to cross uh, the river. In 2018, when we had that flooding, uh, the ice was really close to the, wa to the uh, water line that crosses the bridge. So the water line is on the upstream side, uh, or I'm sorry, the downstream side. Natural gas was on the upstream side. So uh, years ago, we had a redundant line that since has been abandoned. So we're actually looking into figuring out how we can get another line, probably do a, a bore under the river so we can have uh, redundant feed into the village. So if, if the flooding did take that line out, we could have got a five inch fire hose because we could have hydrant on both sides. We could have temporarily ran a line. We'd have to boil, the, boil the water ordinance in place, but we didn't have to get that fire. Public works, uh, we did some paving projects in 2019. We completed some of our own small ones, Brown Avenue, Depot Street. Uh, we did some sidewalk work on Canada Street, New Street. Uh, we will be doing uh, with the grant uh, in front of uh, yeah, Brown Avenue to King Street uh, in front of Shaggy's up that way. A lot of people walk on that side of the road, even though there's a sidewalk on this side of the road, so just trying to improve walkability. Uh, GISing manhole structures, this was through a grant. Uh, they say when, you know, institutional knowledge, when it's all up in here, doesn't do any good for the person that's left behind when that person retires. So we've done a lot of GISing uh, last year of our water systems, our water lines, our curve stops. This is the next step, manhole structures and outfalls. And then we're also, uh, the Public Works has also helped uh, with preparation for the 20 year operations of the structures evaluations for the wastewater plant. So basically all the manholes that you see for uh, uh, wastewater and stormwater, they're responsible for all those. So the plant operators run the plant when the stuff comes in, our Public Works maintains the infrastructure. Okay. Uh, so we also work with the wastewater lagoon but we had to uh, reinforce the banks that system is what 30 years now i think so we had to re uh, enforce the banks on the, our lagoons uh we also worked with the town uh together that was kind of a cool project putting up the uh, playground uh, at the swan school working with the town and the, the village so it's good work there good collaboration so we had a new hire uh dylan dupont Started uh, this spring, right? Started this spring, got him a CDL license, and now the state changed all those requirements. So that's gonna be a lot of fun going forward if we lose any guys in the public works. And then we had a summer person that's helped out, Brian Paradis, who's a really good, really good kid, who's going to college. Uh, we'll probably try to see if we can get another person as well. Because a lot of these, in the summertime, if you look, our window is very small for projects. So, we, and when the guys are mowing the lawns, if we can get summer help to do the lawn work, it helps them focus on, you know, the line upgrades, that CBDG money that you see, uh, that Chris was talking about, that's in the warning. Uh, that's monies that had revolved back from the Blake Commons project. Uh, so we can actually use that for infrastructure. So that's gonna help us redo a water line on Depot Street. There's other water lines on uh, South River that we're looking at, North River Street, sorry. But that's gonna be a little bit further down the road. Uh, we also have a lot of four inch lines within the village we've got to work on. Uh, so those are ongoing projects. Uh, electric department, 20, 125 years old. Who would have thunk it, right? 1894 is when our trustees decided we were going to, uh, we were going to uh, produce electricity for our, uh, our residents here in Swan. Uh, again, we've provided a lot of mutual aid to our neighboring utilities. Um, the guys will go out in Enosburg. They've been out in Vermont Electric Co-ops, Territory, Richford, uh, areas like that during uh, uh, windstorms, snowstorms. And our reliability, 
uh, is kept up by our tree trimming. We spend quite a bit of money keeping our rights of way clear, uh, trimming trees, uh, danger trees, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, occasionally, like last uh, summer, when that windstorm came through on the Quam shore, that's one of those unexpected things. I mean, nobody would have nobody would have expected those big pine trees to come down like they did. But I think it was what three hours we had power restored. Uh, we performed line extensions for customers and upgraded some of our own poles and wires. Uh, again, the project we helped move some poles down on South River for the the town's walkability project uh, from the rail trail up to the village systems infrastructure. So you know when you're trying to walk that area, uh, make it safer. The town actually did a really good job clearing those banks, cutting them back with the uh, the scrub trees, so it gives more visibility. There's a lot of people that do walk that section, so we're trying to improve the infrastructure from the uh, from the uh, Dick Thompson Rail Trail coming in uh, down to the to the depot and then into the village. Uh, <clears throat> public power day and week. Uh, and some of you some of you folks probably saw the Zem Mobile Home Zero Energy Modular Home down in the park. That was a project that uh, the Climate Economies Models Communities program that we had from the Vermont Council on Rural Development. Uh, it was part of kind of like an offshoot from uh, the, uh, the uh, community visit, but this was focused around energy efficiency, uh, trying to get uh, away from fossil fuels and more onto uh, uh, renewable energy. Uh, so that zero energy modular home Basically, the theory behind it is, is that uh, whatever money you would save in utility bills, uh, fuel oil bills, whatever, uh, we would pay for the mortgage on this thing. So it was really neat. Well, we had, it was cool about this, that Efficiency Vermont was telling us that uh, the people who visited, they had more people visit in Swanton than they did in Rutland when they had that display down, down in Rutland. So it gives you an idea of how much uh, interest we have here. Uh, working with uh, relationship with Efficiency Vermont, VEPSA, which is our Vermont Public Powers Authority. So we are a part of, so when you look at Swanton Electric as a public utility, I've been around since 1894, the, the difference between us and like a GMP is uh, our rates, the you folks are our shareholders. So we don't have to deal with a board of, uh, a, 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 we want to call it board of not directors. A board, of, thank you, board of directors. We want to say board of trustees, and you know, <laughs> but board of directors. You know, they don't have dividends that they have to pay. But you guys paying rates come right back into the electric department, into our into our infrastructure. So uh, we're doing a lot of work with uh, trying to help people understand that <clears throat> how important public power is here in Swanton, with the third lowest rates in the state. Uh, we're also part of something bigger, we're part of Vermont Public Power, uh, and I happen to be uh, on the board of directors and the chairman for Vermont Public Power, but I'm also on the board of directors for NEPA, which is Northeast Public Power, which is part of APPA, which is American Public Power. So there happens to be more public power utilities than there are uh, IOUs or uh, independent. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, and basically, what we're trying to, what we, tr we would like our our ratepayers to understand that when you call Efficiency Vermont, Efficiency Vermont is a leg of what Swanton Electric has to offer you. Also, VEPSA can offer you rebates that Efficiency Vermont can also offer you. So when you're working with Efficiency Vermont, what I'm trying to get across to them, Efficiency Vermont, is that when you folks. When they come into our community, work with our businesses, I want to know that they're working with our businesses as well. I want to know they're working with our, our, uh, our homeowners and our rental properties because uh, we have other things that we can offer them for support too. And when you have somebody knocking on your door, it's good to see somebody that you know, one of our you know village manager or, or the line crew guys or one of the trustees. It's like that, that uh, familiar face. So just trying to reiterate that fact that we're part of something bigger. Uh, yeah, and then the collaborator uh, wraps it in Efficiency Vermont. We had a new hire, Jody Benoit, uh, this past last year. Uh, we have one person that's going to retire uh, in March. Yeah. 
Jay Spears is going to be retiring. Had a lot of churn this year, for the past few years. Hydro plant, general repairs, we continue with the key maintenance program. Uh, we'll talk about that again a little bit later. Uh, we started the process to relicense. Uh, we, uh, we've been talking about this the past couple of years because it's a five year process. We really don't know what it's going to take, uh, how much money it's going to take to do the relicense. Right now, we've, we've submitted the preliminary application document, they call it the PAD, which says that we're going to use the traditional licensing process. So we're in that process right now, and now we're waiting on uh, uh, interested parties to tell us we would like this study, we would like that study. So these interested parties are Department of Environmental Con Conservation, uh, Agency of Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife, the Rivers People, uh, Archaeological, the yeah, Atmaki. Uh, there's some other people I haven't even heard of that have showed up. Lots of stuff. So anyway, we're in the three. We're in the third year of that process. Halloween rains. Uh, those were near record. So the, the, the uh, January, February 2018 flooding, that was uh, ice associated with that. That was 10.49 feet or 10.64 feet of water uh, ice uh, at our gauge here in Swan. This one was 9.49 feet and that was strictly water, no ice associated with that. The next record that this one almost broke was also in January, 9.5 feet and that was ice associated. It gives you an idea when you looked at the, that uh, culvert that got washed out, it's a darn good reason. That was a lot of rain that came through here. Uh, we were fortunate, it almost started to flood again out uh, uh, South River, uh, but it didn't. Uh, but you know, when you get those high rains, it triggers our EAP up at the hydro plant, emergency action plan. So there's certain levels that we have to follow and when the river gets so high, I get a phone call at two in the morning says, hey, the river's coming up. Okay, so then we start making all these other calls to FERC and to uh, other state agencies and say, hey, the river's coming up. Uh, so yeah, and then the, the EMD also, it's, it's a good thing. I guess I get that and then I have that other half that I work to. Uh, retirements uh, for December, Albert Harris retired after 17 years? 11 years. 11 years, thank you. Uh, then we had a couple of new hires, Dan Chevalier and Josh uh, Packard got hired in. Maintenance department. So the e-maintenance program, there's uh, 1,500 individual assets throughout the village. So when you're looking at the water plant, sewer plant, pump stations, water lines, uh, this building. What's that? Power plant. Power plant, thank you, hydro. Uh, 1,500 different assets and they're all documented into this uh, automatic uh, program. Basically, it'll spit out a weekly preventative maintenance program, a monthly, quarterly, annual, whatever. So that way you know that we're actually paying attention to the assets that you folks uh, pay for through your rates or through your taxes. So this was, this happened like, I think it was four years ago we put this in. I mean, we could also, one day we could probably also do that for the town's assets and put that in there. We can spit out preventative maintenance processes and whatever. Uh, but it ensures all the equipment is, is you're doing preventative maintenance, not two o'clock in the morning emergency repairs. So that's a good thing that we got. Uh, the front office, again, provide top notch customer service while providing accounting, grant management, billing, accounts payable, human resources, <coughs> IT support, job estimates, payroll for all the other departments. Uh, the staff also goes through continuing education through. Uh, 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 Vermont leagues have continuing education, but also uh, we have to take courses through the Public Utilities Commission, uh, state law efficiency in Vermont. And very small staff, five people up front. And four people up front, then it's fine. Uh, the village complex. Yeah, okay. The village complex. So we did a study last year to see how we could modify this place. It's built in 78. Uh, you know, houses, all of these uh, agencies and these departments, uh, and, and the police department is outgrowing it. So we hired Wyman and Lanfear, the architects, to do an evaluation on the complex. I mean, uh, we had a situation where we had a class here and the, the bathrooms aren't handicapped accessible. It was a little embarrassing for this woman that uh, couldn't access the bathrooms. She had to go down to the McDonald's. And uh, so we said, okay, enough's enough. 
we have to do something with this. We have a price tag. It's crazy. I don't want to mention it right now. It me. Uh, so we're looking for grants right now to see what we can do to offset. Uh, probably do this in stages, but uh, it was a nice design. And whoever, anybody wants to see it, come see me. I'll show it. Really, it was really good work. Thoughts for 2020? Collaboration. Uh, community and economic development. Again, uh, working with Elizabeth a lot uh, with the local businesses, rental properties. Uh, that was a process through uh, Efficiency Vermont, VEPSA, the electric department, how important those partnerships are for our small community. Uh, state representatives, I mean, whenever I got an issue about something, I can send Brian an email, he'll respond back almost within 10 minutes. Mariana, the same thing. Randy Brock is really good. Corey Parent, also excellent for us. Uh, but we have a representation from VEPSA uh, down at the State House. Uh, uh, Melissa Bailey uh, is our representative for VEPSA down at the State House. And it's, they're starting to listen to public power. Uh, even though we're small, I guess I keep saying this, we're part of something bigger. Uh, a small utility like Swanton Electric, but we're part of VEPSA, who are 12 other public owned utilities like Jacksonville, they only have like what, 500 meters, I think. They're way down the bottom part of uh, the state of Vermont. So we have 3,600 meters, I believe. Uh, but just making our voice heard, uh, importance, trying to make sure they understand the importance of public power. Also, I mean, I've been to Washington, uh, where we just visited our representatives from the state of Vermont with VEPSA and with uh, NEPA, Northeast Public Powers Authority as well. And we talked to you know, Lady Sanders and Welch about uh, and FEMA, uh, not FEMA, FERC, about you know what rules that they make in Washington, how it affects small public power utilities. And they're actually listening to us, which is highly unusual for Washington. Uh, then the town and village uh, resource sharing. There's no duplicate. I've heard some people say, well, there's duplications of resources with Swanton town and the village. No, no duplication. It's collaboration of services. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that uh, we call them, they call us. We share equipment, we share staff, we share resources, uh, materials. Uh, I mean, I get, I get calls from the select board. How much you guys pay for salt? So send them information on what we pay for salt. You know, it's that type of stuff that it's always been important to us I'll say us, important to boards, to have our taxpayers know that it doesn't matter if you live in the village or the town, it's transparent. We work together in one swan. And yes, I was waiting on Joel to stand up and say that. Uh, but yeah, it should be transparent to you, regardless of where you live. And if we don't have the, if you, sent, if you go to the town and say, well, that's the village, we'll hook you up. Same thing here. If, it's with the, if you come here and it's a town issue, we'll hook you up. So we had a couple of 25 years of service, and uh, Darren doesn't like to have his picture taken all by himself, so if we put all the line through that. But. So this is Jody, Tanner, uh, Brendan, Jay, who's gonna be retiring, Darren, and uh, uh, Wayne. I wanted to have all the department heads come tonight, and then I just got too busy to send them all an email so you folks can see who the department heads are that serve you folks within the swamp. Uh, Brian Bishop, 25 years. Actually, that, uh, that guy's gonna retire this year too, in July. Uh, Albert, talked about him, he retired uh, this past December. Candidates. So village president, one year term, Neil Spear. You wanna read that or you want me to read it? Well, I wanna go through it and then okay. I'll do it. So Diane Day, again, a uh, one-year term for the Village Clerk, if you want to say anything? I just, like Betty said, appreciate your past support and uh, hopefully your continued support. So thank you all. Uh, collector of delinquent taxes, Betty. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I skipped you. That's okay. It was on purpose. <laughs> right. Thank you. I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe you want to say yeah. something? I, just, I think I've said it, so okay. thank you. And Adam Paxman, I really apologize for this. Three year term. Yes. So, yes, Adam Paxman running for election again. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the last nine years of support they've given me that you folks have. Um, it's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, very humbling experience to be a village trustee or even a select board member. And, uh, 
I appreciate the trust that you put in me to make the right decisions for this community. And, you know, part of the team, we're going to make Swan continue to grow and make it great. Thank you. That's it. As I mentioned before, Neil couldn't be here tonight. Taking a much deserved vacation, but he left a little something to, to, uh, to read here. And I also wanted to put in a pitch for Adam. He wears a man, he's the man who wears a gazillion hats. Every time something really significant goes on in the park, he's the man behind it. Whether it's Christmas in the park, whether it's a car show, whatever it is, he's there. This guy has earned his stripes. And he certainly has my endorsement for it. Of being reelected. But we're and Neil as well. I mean, Neil's been over 20 years our, our president. He took a year off and then, then ended up back again. Um, he's lived here all his life. I think I don't know anybody who fights harder, knows more about, and is, is, a, is a more stanch supporter, staunch supporter of our village than Neil Spear. And here's what he wanted to do. To the people of our Swanton community, although I'm not able to be at this informational meeting, the first I've missed in 20 years, I would like the citizens of Swanton to know that I am in the spirit and am running for another term as our village president. The 20 years that I have been involved as your president have made me proud of the community of Swanton and our board of trustees, village, village employees, and the village managers. We have collectively moved forward to improve our community and all departments strive to deliver the best services to our community. Our citizens and boards, both trustees and select boards, have created an inviting atmosphere for living in Swan. Members of the SEP, the Arts Council, the uh, Beautification Committee, and the Swan Rec have contributed greatly in assisting the Swans management members to greatly improve our community. I hope I have not left anyone out off the credit list, but if I have, I, it was not intentional. This being said, I would greatly appreciate your support and vote to continue improving our community of Swan. My sincere thanks, Neil Spear. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. So, um, One for both of our meetings, maybe uh, Joel has something here as well. Is there public comment? Is there any questions or anything that we can ask for you or, or something? And Daniels is standing up. Here comes trouble. <laughs> so I look around the room here at first off tonight. Who's going to be left to pay taxes left here in 10 years? Many young people here. Taxes. So we're leaving Vermont because there's no jobs. We're leaving Vermont because there isn't much good housing. People aren't moving to Vermont because there's no place to live. Are we all going to someday move out of Vermont because the taxes are too high? And I'd hate to see that come because I just bought my tombstone this year. And I told the kids they might have to move it somewhere else if I won't. But anyway, when I read the Village Report newspaper article two or three weeks ago, and I think it was the issue of Janu January 25th, and I will admit there's one thing I don't remember last year. I don't remember being told that money from the sale of fire trucks would not be used to help pay for the new trucks. That was going to be used to help pay for something else. Now, had I known that last year, I would have objected to that particular time. But in the report of January 25th, we have in the messenger that the police department is going up 9%. The fire department is going up 8%. I mean, those are increases that I've never seen in this community or pretty much in the area. Those are big expenses. Now, I know that we've got to pay our bills. 
And I am against these sinking funds. Because if I put money into a sinking fund today, at my age, I'm likely to be gone before that money is spent for that. So I don't get any benefit for my tax dollar. But I would like to tell you how I'm going to vote on two items. I'm going to vote no on the fire department budget and the police department budget. Because that's a lot of money. Those are huge increases. Now, what the reasons were, I don't know. But if we've taken the money from the sale of those trucks, I believe one of them brought in 65000 I got the wrong figure correctly. I get what the, that's, that's the figure I heard. I'm sorry. I'm off. But whatever the figure is, that should have been applied to help pay for the new trucks, in my opinion. I'll Police department, 9%. Thing. I guess there was a lot of crime. I don't know. But maybe instead of paying people overtime, we ought to be looking to hire a few more part-time officers. Maybe we need to hire another police officer so that we don't have to get into overtime and all of that type of thing. So there needs to be some study of that. But I'm going to vote for those two. And I'm also going to vote for the three articles that say to take the excess money from the highway, the general fund, and the fire department. And my reasoning is if we get together and we defeat those five items, they have to come back to another vote. And what I'm hoping is that the trustees will take the $30,000 in, in the highway department, $20,000 in the general fund, and $18,000 in the fire department, surplus, and allocate some of that money to bring down the fire and police department budgets so that they're more reasonable. That's my thought. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm encouraging you to do the same thing, because they'll have to come back for another vote. Perhaps we can reallocate that surplus. You don't see too many towns where they just roll this over. Usually it's used to help reduce taxes the next year. That's my thought. Well, Thank you. last year when we bought the trucks, we, we warned you that there would be an increase this year. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what you're seeing. So this year seems to be as larger than I thought. Uh, on page 22, 23. Yep. Of your, if you have your report with you, you have you look under lo loan proceeds. It's uh, 1.34 million dollars. And if you look on page 23, equipment was 1.448 million dollars. There's a hundred thousand dollars difference. A hundred thousand dollars was some of the sales of one of those trucks and also what was rolled over into prior years, the sinking fund, where it says if there was a surplus, roll it over into that. So that came up to about a hundred thousand dollars that got taken off the purchase of those two trucks. The two trucks were 1.4 million, uh, 1.44, it was actually 1.341. Uh, so a hundred thousand was taken off that. Uh, the police department, one of the issues for theirs was the overtime. Yeah, uh, they've interviewed a bunch of uh, full-timers or part-timers now, but I do know Joey runs a lot of the fill-in shifts because he's exempt, uh, so we don't, uh, his salary, uh, he doesn't get paid overtime. So he's been trying to fill in a lot of those slots too. So we knew we were going to be hard on the, uh, on the overtime. Uh, we just don't pay high. It's $17.50 an hour for a part-time cop and all the issues they got to deal with, you, you just won't no pay them enough. There's no one applying. Yeah. Let's say that. No, we, we can't pull them off the street. So, it's not applying. The, the lion's share of the police department is the, is the paychecks and you need the men to be able to keep us safe. Um, I think they do. It's a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. But they do a heck of a job. If you look at the, the arrests and what's generally going on in town, crime is diminishing sometimes. The normal things that we think about, the, uh, uh, I'm not trying to say here, 
the, the menacing pieces are have dropped off. The robbery, the robbery is down. Um, I think these guys do a really good job. And in order to, to keep that going off, the guys had in their uniforms have to be out there. This summer, if you read the report, there'll be people walking the streets, um, dressing the village on bicycles. I mean, we're doing pretty darn well. I know mean, it is a lot of money. And I'm probably one of the top guys that complain about it. But I can tell you, I really feel we're getting our money through. Chris, don't misinterpret me. I'm not saying that they're doing a poor job. I'm just concerned with the total amount of money. Understood. And we, believe me, we chewed that out plenty. I mean, Joey got his, got his uh, ears full. <laughs> Do you have anything, Joey, you want to add to this? Uh, I mean, the only thing I can uh, state before is, our, and I'm not sure on the 9%, I thought it was less than that, but um, we did uh, take a hit with overtime because of losing a few people uh, throughout the year in our part-time ranks. Um, one of those, one out of three positions was filled last year. Um, we had two that were in field training that um, unfortunately for one reason or another washed out in that training program. We have two more in our part-time training, in the part-time training program that we should uh, see availability uh, within the, the next four or five months. Their training uh, doesn't start until mid-March, which will reduce what our overtime uh, has been here in the village, uh, bringing us back down to uh, our, our uh, a more reasonable amount of money. But our overall budget, other than to carry over an overtime, was pretty much level funded at uh, a 2% increase, with most of that being in health care and some other benefits. Yeah, I think your workers, I think workers comp went up uh, because of the experience mod that was normal for PD. Yeah, we took a huge hit in workers comp. But, I hear you, Ed. I understand what you're saying, and I mean we do we do try the best we can to keep an eye on those budgets. Yeah, the articles of, that you mentioned before here, which is the Article Six, Seven, and Eight, those extra monies, we've talked about this for at least the last five years, and we had that's why we put this on the ballot. But those monies being put ahead for future costs. I mean, we didn't plan to have that money left over. That just shows how good a job our management does in managing our budgets. But that money being left over, probably, if, it, if it's a dollar left over, probably saved us a buck and a quarter in the future because of the fact that we have the cash to pay for something that we need so we don't need to have those quick spikes of having to buy something in the future. We invest that money, that money makes money for us. It, it's there as a cushion to help with future pur purchases. And everything costs more. I mean, look at what we pay for the fire trucks. I mean, who would ever, ever thought that trucks cost that much? But they do. Our new um, Vactor truck, the, the trucks for the linemen, Everything goes up. You know, a little cushion, if there happens to be some money left over, which the accountants tell us we're actually saving money down the road in the next year. It's not like you are paying money that you, you know, for years ahead of time. It, it's, it gets used the following year. It, it offsets future costs. It helps keep the, the demand and the money needed at a more stable rate. Like I said, we Ed's brought this same point up several years, and he, he's not wrong. But I want you to know that we think about it. We talked about our we talked about it with our controller. We talked about it with our bankers. This is the most. Best outcome for when this movie goes. 
Any more questions? Yeah. I just want to mention that I believe it was Jason or somebody at a meeting said that the cost of the fire truck actually has gone up 15%. This since year, we ordered, yeah. since we ordered it, so we actually saved a lot of money by purchasing it last year, and I, I just want to mention that so that's out in case no vision. So some of the new diesel regulations too, with the DEF that it's in there, it's to help burn off the uh, carbons in there to try to make them cleaner. Yeah. It's the same thing with the line trucks, the plow trucks, fire trucks. All the trucks have to have that DEF in them. Any more comments or questions? Um, I'd like to thank, I'm, I'm Michelle Nordberg. Thank you. This is my very first meeting. Um, although I go to a lot of other meetings, I read all of the literature, I watch you on video. Thank you, Heather. And uh, I just want to comment, Ed, I appreciate your comments. I don't, and I thank our first responders, I thank all of the reports because this is how I get my information. Is, as a person who comes in and out of the community. I would only just comment that we're talking about our numbers, the articles, talk about dollars that are just in absence um, of, of a percentage increase, which I think I'm hearing, you refer to 9%, you're like, I'm not sure if it's 9%. I run the numbers, I'm an accountant, I, I read everything in detail. But it would be nice in future articles to have what that percentage differential is, so that we know 800,000 means what 10% increase, because many of us operate our financials on an increase. We know we get a 2% increase in our income, or we know our taxes go up, you know, 5%, that that number means something to a person who doesn't read this detail that I do. So I would just ask that we do that in, we, in the we, future. And I don't know if there's We talk that. about it in terms of percentages. Yeah. We just have to make sure we put them right. Yes, and so, I mean, it's just an easy, it's a parenthetical, which yeah. means a 10% increase. For the minutes of the meeting, would you repeat your name again? Um, Michelle Nordberg. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just, just from a financial perspective, that actually computes something to a person who so, doesn't have that detail. Michelle, we do. Uh, Diane was mentioning that we do have those percentages in, uh, but we didn't put it in this report. We talk about those percentages at our uh, uh, trustees meetings. Just that, understand that I could be a voter who comes in on yeah. the third. I just saw the ballot for the first time. Maybe I saw it before. I didn't happen to read this report. You're asking me, one of the 700 voters of last year, to come in and, and say $800,000, yes or no. I don't know what that means. Was it 700000 last year? Is it eight hundred and fifty? Is it a drop? I'm just saying, try and remember who the audience is and not everybody reads all of the minutes and everybody reads the report. I would encourage you to not everybody does. So in, just in our articles, we can't, the articles when you go to vote that day, we can't put a percentage in there. The articles have to be written a certain way, but I know in the town report, we have our percentages and difference on each line item, on each on each department there, the increases. So if you look in the highway fund and the general fund, you'll see that we, when we do it, we do it by, we put it in our book with the percentages of increase so you know from year to year, what the percentage of change is, whether it's an increase or a decrease. Yeah. And it is on the articles that get voted on. Kathy, I wasn't disputing that they weren't No, there. no, but I just so you know I that they are the in, the, in the town report. It's just saying that, that I didn't know that there's a restriction in the article writing. And if right. there is, forgive me, yeah, no, if there is something that we can compute out who might not be able to tie 800,000 back to the detail. There are people who can't review this report, and it's not written as a, a proper asset. Well, one of the things we'll out. see in there is that we did is we tried to show you what the tax influence is on 100, dollars $200,000 homes. People can see what the, what the actual dollars increases because of that fractions of a penny um, increase in the tax rate. Well, forgive me for my inedification no, no, in uh, about that. Um, I wanted no, that's to a good yeah, I, know what, I think I know what Michelle's talking about. When Karen and I were uh, outside the building uh, campaign last year before uh, during funding day, some people came up and said it would be really nice if you just had something on the wall or something that said this is what it used to be, and this is what it is now. 
So people that don't have a town report uh, could actually just walk in and then make a choice from there. Could it be on the ballot? Could it be on a piece of paper? I think that's what Michelle means. Right, and if it can't be on the ballot, because you guys know, I understand, sir. If it can't be, that doesn't mean that we can't conclude it out and present it informationally somewhere else and as a poster or something like that, just for people who are walking in. And, and I, it's great input, so I'm glad you're bringing that up. The only danger I see is if you're voting on an 8% increase and you voted no just because it's an 8% increase, and you haven't made yourself informed of what the change is. So if you just vote or decrease, you know, okay, so why, why is the budget down 10%? I don't think that's a good idea to cut it 10%. No. And that's why, unfortunately, in here, with the exception of a few people coming the first time, these are all faces of the people who already work in the public here, and we're not getting in, we're not succeeding in getting the information out. We tried last year; we had a pretty good crowd. This year, we're back down to a very small crowd. And I would love to sit here and talk about the percentages. I'm a numbers guy, and, and say why why the increase or why the decrease, so that people understood and felt better. Right. But you know, we got to get get people more involved. That's why we have vacancies actually running for positions, which is too bad. And instead of two or three running for a position, most of them are either unopposed or no one running. You know, so. Getting that community support involvement, love it, and uh, get more community members here. I encourage everybody in the crowd to bring somebody to the next meeting and try to help the members. Thanks for listening. Actually, we love it when visitors come to our meetings. I'm sure the select board feels the same way. If you get a chance to see what's going on and, and give a little input and ask a few questions, um, it's it's not rocket science. We're Ratepayers and taxpayers, just like you guys, and you know we we really appreciate your input. Um, any other comments? Or any other business from the village from the village standpoint? Is we have, do we have any other business this evening? Yeah, I wanted to comment just briefly, and uh, in support of the police department, which I thought our increase was pretty high. But after several meetings with them, something I better bring to your attention. Um, there were a couple of cases last year, which nobody's mentioned yet, which took a heck of a lot of time from not part-timers. They created a lot of overtime. We had a home invasion here. That's unheard of. And I will not tolerate that sort of thing. The other issue was some people who were in the ages of the 20s, they weren't teenagers, run around and shot up some windows and you all can read the messenger. It took a lot of overtime, man, to get that done. Now, I don't necessarily support them all the time. And obviously I listen to the questions. But I wanted you to know also, in their case, in their defense, there goes our wonderful fire department, I think. Tell us a little bit, Joy, about the staffing issues. I knew that there was a problem with painting police officers everywhere. Tell us about your own. Good Thank man. you. If you look at staffing and law enforcement from a global perspective, Right now, there is over 101 open vacancies for full-time officers, that's not counting uh, part-time officers in the state of Vermont. So even if we, were, even as a state, we were able to hire that 101 tomorrow, we don't even have the training capacity to, to train them. So we are way behind the the, uh, the eight ball, as some people would say, as far as training. Um, law enforcement officers in the state of Vermont from a hiring and recruitment problem. Uh, law enforcement in the last probably decade has seen a, a recruitment and retention problem uh, nationwide, not even just in the state of Vermont. So we recruited four part-time officers last year. One of those part-time officers made it through the process. Uh, the process is uh, very rigorous in uh, both academic and uh, 
community in the way we run our community so that we don't have uh, some Yahoo working within our agency. We just recruited two more people that have made it through our process. Uh, we'll be starting that training, the training academy uh, uh, next month, as I said. With, with that said, that'll tremendously reduce our overtime, keep our, help keep our streets safe. As uh, Mr. Lombard was saying that uh, we had a that rash of BB gun vandalisms throughout the village, a uh, few of more in the town, but the number of uh, man hours that was put into that just to follow up on with witnesses, victims, uh, took a lot of resources from us that we still had other calls to answer. So unfortunately for us this year, we saw a tremendous amount of overtime spike because of losing a couple of part-time officers <coughs> that was made up between myself and some of the other full-time officers filling in the, those, those seats. I don't know if I've answered the question. Within the confines of the village meeting, is there any other necessary business? I'm just wondering, what is the recruitment process? How do you go about recruiting the officers? What is, how do you do that? So, our recruitment um, is mostly via social media. We have not been using uh, print ads because most of the younger people are not reading the sandwich messenger of Burlington Free Press for a law enforcement job. Um, we use the Vermont Police Academy, which is a great <coughs> facility. They post our jobs for us, um, and then the rest of it is, is done via social media. Then we have a, an oral board process um, where, where individuals are interviewed extensively. Then there's a background process that's done. Then the state of Vermont requires an extensive eight-hour, basically, interrogated polygraph. Um, and that's the easiest way to put it. It's eight hours of interrogation um, with a polygrapher. Um, after that process is done, uh, if they pass all of those, then they're eligible to go to the Vermont Police Academy. When I say eight hours, it might be six, it might be seven, but the average length for a lot of the polygraphers are about six to seven hours. And a lot of people, we've, we've had candidates start the polygraph and then just walk out because they don't want to put up with it. But we're not, I mean, it's not an optional piece for us. It's mandated by the state of Vermont. I have one other thing. For the lady out back that wanted the percentages, stay around after the meeting. I have them right here in front. No, I have them too. I was just talking about in general. I mean, I can calculate my own. And, and as Kathy pointed out, many are in here, not, um, but uh, I was just trying to ask a question about the appropriateness of them being included for people who are not here, who might not see the video, and who don't read the report and run the numbers. We can all just that. Thank you, sir. Please, Please can add that. Comment? We're pretty sure we can add that. Yeah. I know we can. <laughs> I would just like to thank the town and the village for their cooperation and to commend you on the way we work together. There's uh, a community south of us would give anything to have a cooperation with their city and town that we have in Swanton. So, in Joel's words, we are one Swanton. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I want to say thank you, too. Um, I'm, I'll be 30 next month, and I was born and raised here in Swanton, and it uh, actually crossed my mind a few times to actually move out because Vermont's getting really expensive to live. Uh, but luckily, Swan's safe, and uh, the community is really close to it. So we decided, eh, we're going to buy a house here. Yeah. So we just barely bought a house in November, and our kids are going to school here, and we don't plan on moving. So you're doing something right. Just, you know. <laughs> it's a great community to raise a family, and I can tell you that. Thank you for staying. Yeah, yeah if I could, I, for those that don't read the report, there's actually one paragraph that I want to read, and it kind of sums up what we've been talking about here. Uh, it's just on the last page, page six. It says, overall, 2019 was a year filled with projects which were championed by our community partners and our supportive citizenry. 
It takes all of us to work together to make the community as special as what we have today. Every one of us are as important as the other. We all make this a community and are responsible for the culture and the climate that our visitors experience while they visit us. Our beautifully his historic and picturesque community draws people to visit. It's each one of us that make them stay. Thank you for volunteering, participating, and being involved. So again, within the context of the village, I don't believe we have anything for executive session. So I'd like to suspend the village meeting and let the, the town finish up and we'll adjourn together. Chris, on the same line, any public comments? Additional comments? I know we had a chance earlier, questions, comments. One thing I'd like to add on the whole percentage discussion is take a good look at an 8% increase and in, let's say the police budget might be minuscule to what a 5% increase in education tax rate is because of the size of their budget. And the other thing, um, if it came up tonight and we had to discuss it, I was gonna mention, does anybody really know what the impact of $10,000 is on a $200,000 home over the course of 12 months, the increase in taxes? So let's say the police department, their budget in the town went up about $10,000 on a $200,000 home that's $2.80 for the year. So just in looking at percentages, sometimes we can really get crazy on it's 8%, it's way over the 2% of what inflation is, etc. But take a look at the line item and what that real impact is on your budget and help try to see whether what you're asking for is worth it for that kind of increase to your taxes. Just putting it all together in the numbers piece of it. So I throw that out there. So I think the fire is kind of going, and we will go through any other necessary business. Good. Good. All right. I don't see any need for executive session. No board members. Session no. I think we're ready to adjourn. For the village, I'm going to have a motion. Motion to adjourn. I move the HR. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. What's in the motion to adjourn? Second. Thank you. 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 Thank you.